I was lost, but you knew where to find me. I was hungry, you were bread for my soul. I was thirsty, and you gave living water. You were my shelter when I had no place to go. That's why sometimes I just want to praise you. Sometimes just to speak your name. Sometimes I just want to thank you. Without asking you for a thing Oh, and sometimes I lift my hands to you And sometimes all I do is cry Everything that I have, I owe to you. Lord and Calvary's the reason why. When I think of the love that you've given, Lord, think of the price you paid for me, then the trials on earth, they just seem like nothing, when they're compared to dark Calvary. Sometimes I just want to praise you. Praise you. Sometimes just to speak your name. Speak your name. Sometimes I just want to thank you. Sometimes I lift my hands to you. Sometimes all I do is cry. Everything that I have, I owe to you. Lord and cast. Sometimes I just want to praise you. Praise you. Sometimes just to speak your name. Speak your name. Sometimes I just want to thank you. Sometimes all I do is cry. Everything that I have, I owe to you. Lord and Calvary's the reason why. Everything. I have I owe to you
Calvary's the reason why.
Savior God to thee. Oh great thou art. At this time, Mother Green will be taking us to prayer. And also the person who will be moderating for this program. Praise the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Glory to God, eternal God and our heavenly Father. Praise God. We thank you, Lord God, for sparing our life to see another new day. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. So we gather together in this fashion, Father. We ask, mighty God, that you comfort every heart, God Almighty, that more, because you are our holy comforter. Father, men look at the outward, but you know what is going on deep on the inside. And so, Father, we pray that you take full control. We pray that you back back every dark cloud. We pray that you strengthen the bereaved family. Mighty God, we look to you today, God, that everything will be done to the honor and to the glorifying of your name. Father, as it please you to take your daughter, Father, God, out of this world. Mighty God, at times we mourn because, oh God, we, it, 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 it's so sad to lose a loved one. But God Almighty, you know everything. And today we just want to place everything into your loving hands while we tell the times in Jesus' name. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise God. Just looking at our picture on the front of the page here, no wonder we can just look at her and know that she was a loving, loving, fear, nice woman. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Sweet soul. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And it's so hard to lose a loved one. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. And if you are here this afternoon and you ever lose a loved one, you know what it's feel like. Praise God. Nevertheless, it is the will of God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So we're going to go straight into our program. The first lesson will be read by Michael Bailey, son-in-law. Bless the name of the Lord. Let's go. Good morning, everybody. Today's first reading is from Psalms 90, verses 1 to 12, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. A prayer of Moses, the man of God, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, wherever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn man to destruction and say, Return, O children of men. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You carry them away like a flood. They are like a sleep. In the morning they are like grass which grows up. In the morning it flourishes and grows up. In the evening it is cut down and withers. For we have been consumed by your anger, and by your wrath we are terrified. We have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your confidence. For all our days have passed away in your wrath. We finished our years like a sigh. The days of our lives are 70 years, and if by reason of strength they are 80 years, yet their boasted hope is only labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For as the fear of you, so is your wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. This is the word of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise God. None of us know when our roll call will be ended. So it is good for us to live right. I'm going to ask um, Deacon Silvera, yeah. Deacon Silvera, to come. And I'm going to ask you just to come. You know, according to the other city, um, the program will come. Okay. All right. Good morning. 
morning, church. We are the grandchildren. My name is Ashna, this is Daryl, this is Ravi, and this is Ajay. Our tributes will be done in age order from Daryl to Ajay. Here was the other people. There's a lot that I can say about Grandma Wizzy and how she's impacted by her today. Both from my own experiences with her over the first two decades plus of my life and from the stories that have been shared with me from Mommy and Uncle Rowan and Auntie Suzanne of how she always found a way to make things happen. Her resilience and resourcefulness are traits that I've always admired and I can only strive to match her in those areas when times of difficulty and challenge present themselves in my life. When she felt ill this time around, it was particularly tough for me, being so far away from her and feeling powerless to provide help and support other than through my own words. At several points over the past couple weeks, I've been haunted by the fact that I was literally just finishing packing uh, my suitcase and getting ready to, to come and see her at the moment when she passed. But what I've also realized over the last couple weeks is that every time I get down thinking about that and just barely missing seeing her alive in the flesh one last time, that spell of despair is always followed by gratitude. I'm thankful for the time I did get to spend with her in my life. I'm thankful for this past summer when she visited us and I got to spend four months with her. I'm thankful for being able to play a part of her last and probably her biggest birthday celebration. I'm thankful that she got that moment to be the center of attention, even if it made her a bit uncomfortable. I'm thankful that she was able to see and hear how many lives she's made an imprint on. And I'm thankful that the day, that, that day provided me with what will be a lasting image of her, which is now ingrained in my brain, of her sitting next to her customized cake with her face on it, and the ackee fruit made of the chocolate, her eight and over balloons floating behind her that I picked up just a couple hours before, with tears of joy coming down her face. Now I'm going to warn you, over the next little while, you're probably going to hear my cousins subtly, or maybe not so subtly, in a, in a Jay's case, present their cases as to why they're each the favorite of the grandchildren. I'm not here today to do that, but what I would like to do is inform you all, or provide a reminder, if you're already aware, of something called the Law of Diminishing Returns. It's a theory that's applicable, applicable in the world of finance and agriculture, but really can be provided, can be used uh, in a lot of cases, a lot of instances. One thing that cannot be argued is that, and it's not up for debate, like most things are with my cousins, most things are, is that I was Grandma Wizzy's first grandchild. <laughs> Mommy is her first daughter. AKA the original investment. <laughs> and that makes me, as our first grandchild, the ultimate ROI. <laughs> kind of like the grand prize yes. on those scratch lottery tickets that she used to love to play. Always with a hilarious look of palpable anticipation on her face. I like to think that a big part of that return is the feeling of pride and joy that grandma must have been filled with when I was born. The first confirmation that her lineage and legacy will continue through multiple generations. And even though I know for a fact that she was filled with the same pride and joy a couple years later when Ravi was born, and eventually when Ashna and Ajay came along, the law simply states that those feelings were a little bit diminished. I also like to think that when Mommy and Daddy migrated to Canada to raise me there, at least part of the reason was to simply allow time for my cousins, the necessary time for them to catch up in the, in the grandchildren rankings. The rankings that I'm sure she kept a log of somewhere in a secret notebook or something. Uh, constantly rearranged the names, two through four, but one I'm sure stayed in the same place the whole time. I'm still looking for that notebook, so if everyone knows where it is, if you have possession of it, I'd like to see it, I'd like to provide evidence for these ones over here. Uh, one thing is for certain though, there were a couple years there back in the beginning where those rankings only had one name on them. The bond of being her first grandchild, the first to provide her with that maximum undiminished feeling of pride and joy is something I will treasure forever until the day that I join her. When she was here with us, 
I love Grandma with the unconditionally. And her passing is nothing but the condition that has allowed her to be somewhere where she can be at peace and watch over me whether I'm here or in Canada or anywhere in this world. And that gives me peace, knowing that she's with me now and she will be forever so that we can make up our last time. Thank you. experiences that everyone who knew grandma had with her over the years, I don't think there was a more fitting culmination to such a remarkable life than her 80th birthday celebration that she enjoyed last summer. That celebration has given me one of the most treasured memories and has brought me peace during this journey. But this piece is separate from the joy of seeing her relax and get the royal treatment that she deserved, or the amazement that I proceeded internally, seeing her fill the room with people from different parts of the world to celebrate her, 
or the fulfillment from everyone involved in the planning to give her this surprise. This piece is as a result of the opportunity that everyone, whether present at the party, in, uh, whether present at the party in person or virtually, was able to save their piece to grandma. And I would like to echo in this tribute the same sentiments which I expressed to grandma when it was my turn. Grandma was the only grandparent who I got the privilege of being present in my life which doesn't make this process of grieving any easier. But regardless, there was never a time where I felt that I was missing out on any love that I would have had with all the grandparents in my life. Whether intentionally or unintentionally, she was able to make up for any attention, affection, and love before I even realized that it was absent. The fact that I am up here reading this feels surreal. I don't need to even go back a little more than a month when I would be setting up the TV for her to watch The Price is Right and Let's Make a Deal, or when she would ask me to plug in her phone for her, but only when I'm finished what I'm doing. None of those things seemed like a chore to me, and neither did driving her to the doctor's appointments, driving her between Kingston and St. Mary, helping to keep her comfortable when she couldn't do it herself, and spending hours at the hospital during her final week. I would do it all again without hesitation. To close with my last words to her, I love you, Grandma. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so my tribute will be done in the form of a love letter to Grandma. So, <clears throat> okay. Dear Grandma, it's been... Much more is to come. 
I will always remember the good memories I've had with you. The first time I remember being on a plane was with you for one of our many hot girl summers in Canada. You used to comb my hair when I barely had anything on my head. I'm really glad that you treated it as if I had long hair until I actually had long hair. From the clips sliding out of my hair to clips getting tangled in my hair. I remember when Ajay and I would help you to pronounce the word film properly. And all you tried, you couldn't pronounce it. It was just flim or film. <laughs> The presents I got from you were also a memory I will cherish. They were normally pajama sets. I remember the one with a puppy on it, one with a Christmas tree, and my most recent one that you gave me last summer, this striped pajama set. The other day, I remember when I was giving you a massage, and you held my striped pajama top and said, you know I love seeing you in this? Now, every time I wear it, I hear that replay in my mind. I remember you always come to Kingston with bags of produce from your plantation, especially pear and banana, and you never bring enough pear to please daddy. Speaking of daddy, why were you guys in water so much? For as long as I remember, whenever we come visit you or you come visit us, on the start even before I make eye contact. The last memory I will mention is the time I saw you at your happiest, when we celebrated your 80th birthday in Canada last July. I replay the video on my phone almost every day of us surprising you at your parties. The childlike smile that you gave while covering your mouth and laughing was probably my favorite part. I think at that moment you were so overwhelmed with love and it made me so happy. I'm really glad that we got to spend time with you when you weren't feeling well. All the quality time we all shared with you since you came up to visit us in January was very special to me and it was very saddening that they had to be the last set of memories we made together. Nonetheless, they were good memories. From arguments on who gave the best massages to playful arguments with daddy, and just all the amusing things that happened that kept your mood up in spite of your pain. Grandma, thank you, thank you for all the memories. Thank you for the talks we've had, the encouragement, the hugs and kisses, the pajamas, the food, the laugh. Thank you for everything. All these things will be kept in a box in my memory labeled the best grandma ever. But not only have you left me with these memories, you have left me with someone that you have passed down your strength to. Someone who before you were sick, I really didn't know exactly just how strong she was. But when your strength started to slip away, it didn't disappear. I saw it move right to her. She almost single-handedly took care of you when you were sick and did the arrangements for your final destination, while also being a present wife, mother, sister, friend, and business owner. She is a superwoman. And I know that she got it from you. I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. Grandma, I know that you see her trying to hang on, and I'm just asking if you could keep an extra eye on her. Because even though Daddy loves her so, 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 so much. She really, really misses her mommy, bad, bad. Thank you for giving us all the privilege to have a Suzanne Maharaja in our lives. That, I think, is my favorite present from you, and I will remember you every time I look at her. For the final time, good night, Grandma. I hope you sleep well tonight and have the sweetest, most peaceful, eternal rest without any pain, suffering, and most importantly, no Ian to annoy you about politics and being close friends on you.
I love you and miss you so much, Grandma. And Daddy loves you as well. From your one and only granddaughter, and by far, your favorite granddaughter. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm Ajay. I want to begin by saying, I want to begin by saying that Grandma behaved young, no matter how old she was. She was independent and did everything that she did properly. Grandma was such a loving, caring, humble, patient, helpful, and a jovial person. She was always one to listen to what I had to say and help in whatever way she could. She was always one to listen to what I had to say and help in whatever way she could, as I was her favorite grandchild. <laughs> when I was younger, sometimes I was scared when I was alone. Grandma would always come and stay with me when I asked her, and that always gave me comfort. When I was younger too, I did not eat much at all. Sometimes I did not even finish my breakfast, the grandma would encourage me, and even when everyone else left the table, she was still with me, encouraging me to finish, encouraging me to finish my food, no matter how much I refused. She was not aggressive in doing so, but she was gentle, and I could see how proud she was when I eventually finished eating. I used to use grandma's phone to play a game when she came to the house before I had my own phone. Unfortunately, she had changed her phone and that game was gone. On many occasions, Grandma displayed her favoritism towards me. <laughs> Grandma and I had a special connection, more than Ruffy, Ashna, or Daryl had with her. It was very clear my whole life that she loved me more than me. Although Daryl said that he is the ultimate favorite because he was born first, that is not the case. She saw that there was a better child on the way and waited for him to come and was glad when he was born. The happiest I have ever seen Grandma was when we went to Canada to celebrate her birthday. Grandma was very strong. Even in her last days, when her body was weak, she was strong mentally. It was difficult to watch her hair decline at such a rapid rate. I did not even understand the extent of her sickness at first. One night she told me that she was sick, but I still didn't understand what was going on. On one occasion, I was supposed to wash the dishes, and I think I had something else to do. And she told me that she would have washed the dishes for me if she wasn't so sick. Even in her in her sixth state, she was always trying to be helpful. Another time, I saw her washing the dishes, and I asked her why she's washing the dishes since she's so sick. And she said that the dishes need to be washed regardless. I decided to wash them and allow her to get her rest. I also helped her as much as I could when she was sick, or at least I think I helped her as much as I could. I would get her food for her, her medicine, her water, and I was probably her personal massage therapist. <laughs> My massages always relieve the pain, and she loved them. <laughs> My massages always relieve the pain, and she loved them because they were coming from her favorite grandchild. <laughs> the only time my massage did not relieve her pain was either her last day or the day before that, as her body was at its worst, and I could not help her no matter how much I tried. <coughs> One day in the hospital, I patted her here for her, 
the Ashna may say that it was terrible. I believe that it was the best therapy that has ever been planned. I helped Grandma to change. I helped her to change positions in the bed when she was uncomfortable. I checked on her every day, even when she was in the hospital, when I came home from school, or in the days and in the nights on the weekend. It was as if her health had declined every day. Every day. Every day, there was one less thing that she could do, and it was difficult to watch. I prayed for her, but at least she's not in pain anymore. I... I still can't bring myself to accept the fact that she's gone. However, I know that I am her favorite grandchild, <laughs> and she loves me the most. I'm going to miss you, Grandma. I love you. No man, I'm to miss you. I like a big man in that rat. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right. Yes. Well, for those of you who don't know, I'm Aunt Wizzy's niece. Yes. Um, so this is a tribute yes. from my sisters and I to Aunt Wizzy. Yes. We're here to celebrate the life of Eileen, that's the right pronunciation, yes. Wilson, affectionately called Aunt Wizzy. To know her is just to love her. My Aunt Wizzy was my mother's younger sister. And over the years, our mother spoke highly of this beautiful sister she had. Not that the others aren't beautiful, but Aunt Lizzie and her had a bond, so she spoke highly of her. Finally, when we met her, she was the picture-perfect lady our mother spoke about. She was ladylike, kind, gentle, soft-spoken, disciplined, and dedicated to family. Whenever she called, she would ask of the development of each child belonging to our mother. She kept in touch, especially with Alicia. Alicia, your hair. Alicia is sitting in there, who's a nurse at the University Hospital, and Michelle. Even when she was taking our trips, the various trips, she said, Michelle, yeah, me a coffee in Europe, Canada, and of course, you know, Michelle, they kept in touch. And um, the Tuesday now, before she passed, my sister Debbie, who is there, called me to say, hurry, Aunt Wizzy is in the hospital, and she's very, very low. So, you know, I do roll and I reach it at the University Hospital in no time. When I went, Maxine, Maxine, right? Maxine and Rohan was, and the grandchildren were telling you how, who love who, man, they had, a, they were also there, never left their grandma's bedside. Um, they said she was responding, and she would only respond, she was, she responded earlier to only Alisa, the nurse at the hospital, which is her, her niece. Having heard that, I decided I was going to have a conversation with my auntie. I said, Auntie, this is Dion, your niece. Can you hear me? And she nodded. I took her foot and scratched it hard. Right foot. We said, You feel that, Auntie Wizzy? She's, mm -hmm. she nodded. But I know she was in deep pain. I could tell when she opened the eyes and closed close it up. She's one of the strongest ladies I met, honestly, on planet Earth. You know, she was in pain. But she was doing a good job with family. Aunt Wizzy's warm and compassionate spirit impacted our lives. All of the siblings from Dorothy Wilson, she has impacted us in more ways than one. 
and our lives, and we will we'll, we'll be forever grateful to Aunt Wizzy. So we will always remember you. So Aunt Wizzy, wherever you are, sleep on beloved. Just sleep and take your rest. Lay down your head on the safest rest. We love you. Jesus loves you. Guys. So rest in peace, Aunt Wizzy, and may life perpetual shine on you. Welcome to Although I think she was taken from us far too soon, 
I'm very happy that she did not suffer for very long and that we got a chance to laugh, pray, and sing with and for her in her last days. She was hospitalized on Friday, March 8th, and we watched her daily drastic climb until the Lord took her home on Wednesday, March 13th at 11.40 p.m. Mommy, you lived an admirable, a good and admirable life. We all miss you dearly, but we're comforted by the fact that you're resting well in the arms of your Savior. Mommy Bunny Bailey, my husband's mom, deeply regrets that she was unable to physically be here to join in this farewell service and has asked me to convey the following remarks. And it goes, over the year, over the 25 plus years that Carolyn and Michael, over the 25 plus years of Carolyn and Michael's marriage, Aunt Wizzy and I have enjoyed a close and mutually loving relationship. But due to the slow recovery on my part from COVID, I decided that it was best not to make the journey to St. Mary, but pay my respects virtually. I am there in spirit, however, and I join with the immediate and extended family in sharing, in saying, rest in peace, Aunt Wizzy, and hear the voice of Jesus welcoming you into his kingdom with the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Therefore, enter now into the joy and happiness of your master. Matthew 25, verses 23. I read the poem, My Mother's Garden. My mother kept a garden, my mother kept a garden, a garden of the heart. She planted all the good things that gave my life its start. She turned me to the sunshine and encouraged me, and encouraged me to dream, fostering and nurturing the seeds of self-esteem. And when the winds and the rain came, she protected me enough. But not too much, because she knew I needed to stand, stand up strong and tough. Her constant good example always taught me right from wrong. Markers for my pathway that will last a lifetime long. I am my mother's garden. I am her legacy. Rest in heaven to peace, Mom. My brother is a man of very few words. <laughs> words, 
I extend sincere condolences to the family of the late Eileen Wilson, old busy. As we celebrate her life on this very bright and blessed day here in the hills of St. Mary. There have indeed been very special memories of this wonderful soul that somehow over many years have progressive, progressively knitted us together for this Thanksgiving tribute. With each succeeding year, moment by moment, event by event, milestone after milestone, smile after smile, and yet interspersed in their midst, challenge after challenge, fulfilling details of the tapestry of what has come to pass as Miss Eileen's gift of 80 years, a life well lived. We thank God for her life. She was indeed a very special lady, and she meant a lot to all of us, whether as neighbor, mother, grandmother, aunt, or sister. She played her innings creditably and in her own humble way registered her legacy. Just look at her beautiful children, Maxine, Suzanne, Rohan. How well she nurtured them, skillfully focusing and embedding them for life. We thank her. She and I had a very special neighborly relationship. From my early teenage years, when I visited the retirement community to conduct all kinds of business, social or religious, to later years on my daily commute on bicycle between Lucky Hill and Jeffrey Town, where I worked as a youth service teacher, there was always a mutual wave and a greeting, the, the hearty country greeting that so many of us grew up on often initiated by myself as a youngster through the ritual expression of respect, then reciprocated by her in acknowledgement with an award-winning smile. And we can all attest to that award-winning smile of Aunt Lizzie. At times, this ritual exchange was enriched by the chorus of fine greeting from others present, chimed in by my young friends on the veranda, Maxine, Susan, and Rohan. They are my friends, we grew up somehow. Quiet, peaceful, hardworking, pleasant, and dignified are some of the words used by others in the retirement community to describe and busy. In later years, as I moved away to study and later returned to visit, Miss Eileen helped me anchor my past, growing up in Lucky Hill with the realities of the present. Her humility and kindness to me belies a spirit of warmth and care that I learned to appreciate as part of living in community. It was a pleasure interacting with her on my visits to Lucky Hill. And there's always something she's giving, especially my favorite, ripe bananas. I am happy, I'm very happy, that my son, now 19, also met and interacted with her on some of those visits. And was also able to serve her coconuts from Rowan's farm just days before she passed. I am missing her already. And the memories of her will always linger with me. Though sad, I am nevertheless delighted that I was able to grasp the warmth of her, her hand one more time on the night of March 13, 2024, before she bade us farewell. Those kind hands still mean much to me. 
Weeks before that, I had gone on one of my usual travels to St. Mary and stopping at her home for the usual heart exchange of greetings and maybe more red bananas or coconuts. I did not see her, upon which I called Suzanne. And then she explained the turn of episodes and her having to be in Kingston for medical care. It was also on the night of March 13, 2024, that I witnessed the heartwarming display of love extended to her by her grandchildren present at her bedside. If indeed she was to be cured instantly in those challenging moments of medical care, then the gentle, therapeutic, yet intense hands of Rav Ravi and Ajay connecting with her, massaging her, would make it happen. Or the gentle, consistent embrace at her chest with laser-like intensity provided by Ashlam would surpass any medical mystery if only it was possible by those expressions of love. The anticipation and hopefulness towards a recovery expressed by Daryl, though not present in the moment, were felt in spirit. Daryl will soon arrive to physically complete the gracious circle of connection with the lady they all grew to love as grandma. Those youngsters clung to the fact that each is grandma's favorite. It turns out that, like Maxine and Suzanne and Rohan before them, she loves them unconditionally above a million skies. So, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, family and friends, this is my humble tribute to Aunt Wizzy. May we picture her in this moment, smiling back at us, and singing with with the Houston lines from her song, 1992, and the lines I quote, I hope life treats you kind, and I hope you have all you dreamed of, and I wish you joy and happiness. But above all this, I wish you love. And particularly for her grandchildren, for her children, sorry, and her adorable grandchildren, I will always love you. As I close, Miss Eileen, I affirm my tribute to you with three stems of orchids, which I graciously ask to be placed at your graveside for your love, for your warmth, for your kindness. And so may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, new and eternal, Jerusalem. May holy angels be there at your welcoming. With all the saints who go before you be there, that you may know the peace and joy of paradise, that you may enter into everlasting rest. And now, may your soul rest in the in peace, in the loving arms of God. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord.
good? All the time. All the time. God is for us. Blessed be his name. Amen. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross. 
to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. The book of Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy that is, and I read from the NIV. Paul, final charge to Timothy. He said, for I am already been poured out like a drink offering and the time of my departure is near. The time for me to leave is at hand. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. And whether you want to accept it or believe it or not, the time for our departure is not far away. You might look at 60 years down the line, but it's still not far. Man that is born of a woman, the Bible says, is full of trouble. And only have a short time to live. Amen. So you get that? Grandma get what? 80. Much of us can. First, I show that we will get 10 more and what we have now. Bless the name of Jesus. So we have to give that thanks for her. The Bible says a man's course is what? Three scores and 10, which is 70. And if by reason of strength, you pass it. Amen. So grandma, by reason of strength, that you get four scores. I'm in church. So you know how many things to give God thanks for? Give God thanks for grandma. Amen. That's the name of Jesus. So Paul said, the time of my departure is at hand. Let the name of Jesus in verse 7 of 2 Timothy chapter 4. He said, I fought a good fight. The support of the cross. I fought a good fight. That's the name of Jesus. That's the name of Jesus. He said, I finish my course. I finish the race. It is important that you finish your race. I was at a sports day just a few days ago and I noticed four first in the race and when the three first person the two person cross over the line there was one still way behind coming another person come come it is important that you cross the finish line bless the name of jesus and this christian race once you were in this Christian race, you're not competing with anyone. So don't watch who is before you, don't watch who is behind you, just stay in your race. You might not be moving as fast as a neighbor, you might not be moving as fast as a deacon, but stay in your race. Stay in your race. Stay in your race. No matter how soon you're going, it's important that you stay in your race. Paul said, a part of a fight. I finished the race. But in doing all of that, he said, I have kept the faith. He said, I kept the faith. Just since we said it the first time connecting to Susan. But she said, Pastor, you don't know me. But I used to go to church here and I can't remember the days and pussy and all the others. And the other day when she came, she said, I can remember the days when I used to stand right up here and sing. Hallelujah. But even today, she's still singing, I kept the faith. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. So don't tell me, sir, because you move from point A to point B, you have to give up. It's a lie. Hallelujah. There are people who tell you, I'm now in college, so I can't go to church again. It's a lie. A party at the time to party. And if you invite right to the weekend, you make time for it. So your position does not have to change what was embedded in you when you come on to your Christian faith. Paul said, I kept the faith. I finished the race, but I did not just finish the race. I Kept the faith. So whatever you are going through, keep the faith. Yes. Yes. Take rough sometime. Glory. Keep the faith. Yes, rough. I don't know if Dave can tell the same always want to stay in church and praise God, but I don't always want to stay and praise God. Hallelujah. There are times when you feel like you want to throw down the whole of the cross. 
She was a loving and caring mother, grandmother, sister, and aunt. But most of all, she loved her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. She was a devoted Christian who was not afraid to share her faith. Most of her friends and acquaintances knew her as Miss Wizzy. But to me and our other nieces and nephews, she will always be Aunt Wizzy. I know I was her favorite nephew, and she was very special to me. But not just to me, but also my siblings. <laughs> This closeness came from the endearment to her sister, my mom, Desida. Yes. Aunt Wizzy was a woman of many talents and hobbies. She loved sewing, gardening, and farming. Whenever she came to Kingston to stay with us, and we looked forward to the goodies. Aki, breadfruit, pears, green bananas, and all types of fruit. If it was in season, Aunt Wizzy would bring it for us. And I tell you a secret, even if it wasn't on our farm, she would go find it on the market and bring it. Because you know that we are looking forward to not just her visit, but those goodies. This tradition clearly continued, and Ian, our son-in-law, recently acclaimed. Yes, she would be plenty peers. I said, how much Ian? At least a dozen and a half. So when she comes, she comes good. These gifts even extended past our little island. And whenever any members of the family was traveling to the US, Aunt Wizzy brought goodies and sent those for us abroad. Her thoughtfulness and generosity were outstanding. Aunt Wizzy was a kind, calm, soft-spoken lady with a beautiful smile. I never heard her raise her voice or get angry. In fact, I don't think she had an unkind bone in her body. She was kindness personified. She was a resourceful, industrious, and hardworking mother who provided for her three children, Carlin, Suzanne, and Rohan. Her children were her first priority, and she knew the importance of a solid education and went to great length to ensure that they got that education that she thought was necessary. She knew how to stretch a dollar. I often wonder if she used those sewing skills to stitch elastic into those dollars. Because trust me, her dollars stretch far. Aunt Wizzy taught herself to do hand embroidery and made exceptional garments. In fact, she worked for someone who had a contract making embroidered items for the tourist industry. Last year, her children threw Aunt Wizzy a surprise 80th birthday party. The following are some of the reflections from the celebrity toast, celebratory toast. From Carol the Firstborn. Mommy, your beauty shines both inside and out. You're the humblest person I know. You're honest and caring. The love and values you have passed on to your three children and four grandchildren are priceless. You are simply the best. Yeah. Just a little side story she told. And she said, these reflect some of the highlights of her talents. Mommy must have been a baseball player or cricketer in her previous life because she sure know how to throw a curve ball. And in her case, a curve shoe. <laughs> I was very lippy in my younger years and on one occasion, Mommy was just talking and talking a little too much. She was a nang 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 You bad little you. I realized she was taking off her slippers and running towards the next room, glancing back as I turned the corner because I thought I was safe. To my surprise, around the corner came that shoe. And instantly I felt my eyes go red as the shoe hit me live and direct in my face. <laughs> Plenty spin on that shoe there. Yeah. <laughs> Mommy and I had our fair share of disagreements, but our love for each other was unwavering. And from Suzanne. Mommy was 100% dedicated to her children and all their needs. She was selfless in everything she did. 
She was a seamstress and made our dresses for church, our casual clothes, and our uniform for school every year. She was a farmer. We live on a three-quarter acre of land, and it was fertile and fully utilized as she planted all vegetables and ground provisions of imaginable. Believe it or not, Mummy also reared chickens and pigs, and her pigs were always in high demand by the butchers because of the excellent quality of their meat. She was a virtuous woman and simply the best. Of course, Ron is a man of few words. And when I asked him what about your mom, he says, she was humble, loving, and caring. Her sister Hortense remember her, the good times they had as children, playing hide and seek, going to the river to catch angle and crawfish, and having lots of fun. Proverbs 31 describes a woman of noble character, and many sections of that scripture capture the attributes of my Aunt Lizzie. And I quote, she's worthy far more than rubies. She provides food for her family. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She sees her trading as profitable, and her lamp does not go out at night. She opens her arms to the door and extends her hands to the needy. She makes linen garments and sells them, and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Many women do noble things, but our Aunt Wizzy surprised them all. Honor her for all her hands had done, and let her works bring her praise. We will miss her. We certainly will. She is irreplaceable. But we know she has gone home ahead of us to be with our Savior. She was one of 14 children, and she survived by her sisters, by her daughters, Caroline and Suzanne, son Rowan, son-in-law Ian and Michael, sisters Faith, Hortense, and Sybil, grandchildren Daryl, Ravi, Ashna, and Ajay, many nieces and nephews, and other family members. I will close with an extract from St. Timothy, from the Second Timothy 4, 7 to 8. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of return. And that prize is not just for me, but all who eagerly look forward to that appearing. Look forward to his appearing. Good night, Aunt Lizzie. Sleep and have your rest. We all love you, but God loves you the best. Lay your head upon your Savior's breast and travel safely home. May your soul rest in peace and light perpetual shine upon you. Thank you. Amen. I don't know if you listen to him and this but your minister ladies. We're not gonna further. Praise God at this time I'm gonna have to the real family to sit and have the well wishers, friends, loved ones, please stand. Bless the name of the Lord and I'm gonna have Pastor Jeffrey to pray for me. Praise the Lord. Somebody give him praise. Before I pray, I just want to extend my sincere condolences to the members of the grief. Of course, you know, it is so hard to lose a loved one to the grave. But we know that there is a bright hope. 
And when you have this hope, of course, you're, you're, you're crying, you're bad if you want, but, but you know that there is victory in the grave. Amen. Amen. You know, I'm afraid of this family way back when. We used to come to this church, we used to sing and pray, and of course, while we sow the seed in our daughters. So I said, I should train up the child in the way they should go. And when they become whole, they will not be part of it. And we have to go all the way back to Road Street. Yes, where we know what I'm talking about. Yes, and sometimes our mood of transportation was Costa struck back. Yes, you know, Costa. Yes. Yeah, man. Yes. So I still remember those days. Amen? Yes. But I, I want to say, my brothers and sisters, let us just be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For we know in two season you shall read if you faith not. Let us pray. Eternal God, the righteous and the Father, we honor you, we praise you, and we lift you, God. We thank you, God, that all good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Lord, we recognize, God, that your name is excellent in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. And out of the mouth of babes and suckling, you are the strength. Father God, we thank you for the life of our dear sister, our dear mother. And Lord, you have the family that leave behind you. Father God, I pray to cover them right now, Jesus. We know, Lord, that you say that in our sorrow, you are our comfort. In our weakness, you are our strength. And I pray right now, God, to strengthen them. And Father, for those who are not accepting the life to Jesus, give the life to Jesus. I pray God to touch them right now. I pray to give it right to you before it's too late. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mr. Name of Jesus. At this time, I reach this section of our program where we're going to exit. From here, and it's when someone will be laid to rest at the Gear and the Canon Churchyard. Alright? So, for those who don't know Gear, we'll get a chance to know Gear today. Of course, yes, nice city. Amen. No snow today, but you think I come on have a very good day for such happening. So, uh, the platform will leave first, followed by the um, Paul years and the Mary family, then when we show this. Right? As we do our recessional in, it is well with my soul.
I stood in the courtroom The judge turned my way It looks like you're guilty Now what do you say? I spoke up no defense but that's when mercy walked in mercy walked in and pleaded my case called to the same God To die a million teardrops in your eyes, and you may feel the sun will never shine. The clouds are lowly hanging down. You may feel like you want. And you may feel like you can't go on But you must never stop and cry Just to wipe those teardrops from your eyes And keep your feet on the ground Bless the Lord. Lord. I want you to blend your voices together and we sing this hymn. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, 
and time shall be no more. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the saved on earth shall gather over on the other side, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll shall be there. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Amen. We have an assurance yes. uh, that when to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Blessed are the dead who died in the Lord. Henceforth, they rest from their labors for their deed follow them. Lo, I told you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will raise imperishable. And we shall be changed, for this perishable nature must put on imperishable, and this mortal nature must put on immortality. When this perishable put on imperishable, and this mortal put on immortality, then shall come to pass the same that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Now, as it has pleased the Almighty God, we take our dear sis, the wish from us, we now commit our body to the heart, Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, a mini mansion. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. 
and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. O Lord of life and death, we acknowledge the reality of death. Although it separate our loved ones and make us aware that it's only for a season. Although it brings griefs, may we look to the Spirit to bring comfort and peace to those who mourn. Although it brings disappointment, give us faith to look for the future with a hope and confidence and courage. Now, O oh Father, abide with these, our friends, throughout the coming days, and bring us all together again around the throne in eternal glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Assurance, say, give him thanks and praise. 
Amen. We're going to some choruses now. Some sweet day. Some sweet day. I'm going away. I'm gonna leave this world. No
my chains were broken I felt born again The moment that mercy walked in Oh, mercy walked in And pleaded my case sun will never shine the clouds are lonely hanging down you may feel like you want to give up and you may feel like you can't go on but you must never stop Just to wipe those teardrops from your eyes And keep your feet on the ground
Is not. 